Streaming videos over the internet would be difficult, if not impossible, if we didn't have codecs. Today, we'll be looking at the H.266 video codec. H.266, also known as Versatile Video Coding or VCC, is the next generation video codec that aims to meet the ever increasing video quality and bandwidth efficiency demands of the world in this video context centric world. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Subrent we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. So let's first take a look at what H.266 is and how it works and then we'll look at how it compares to the previous generation video codecs like H.265 and H.264 as well as its current competitor in the market that is open source and that is AV1. Finally, we'll also look at the compatibility and market penetration of the H.266 codec. So let's begin. The main job of a video codec is to compress the video file and make it friendly for transmitting over the internet, for example. The H.266 or VCC, as it's also known as, is a direct successor of the H.265 standard. We have a video on this channel breaking down H.265 and H.264 if you want to learn more about these. H.266 is designed to slowly replace H.265 and become the main video codec standard. Right now, the direct competitor is the AV1 codec by AO Media. Work on H.266 started back in 2017 and was first revealed to the public in 2020. The aim was to create a codec that meets the challenges of modern day video streaming. So things like support for 4K streaming and HDR and so on were the priority of this codec. H.266 even supports 8K streaming, even though there's no real streaming content for that outside of, let's say, YouTube, which shows us how forward thinking H.266 is is trying to be. The main focus was cutting down video bandwidth usage as well as improving video quality. The new H.266 standard has 50% better compression for the same perceived video quality as compared to H.265 and it supports lossless compression. For those who don't know what lossless compression is, this is when the file is rebuilt into its original form after decompression without losing any data. H.266 uses a variety of different techniques to make its compression better than before. These include things like improved interframe prediction, which is when the video compression algorithm tries to predict the motion between different frames to cut down on data needed to be stored at the encoding phase to faithfully recreate the video at the decoding phase. H.266 uses a much more complex encoding algorithm, so even though it does offer much better compression as compared to previous codecs, it also means that it's more CPU intensive. So encoding and decoding times are significantly longer as compared to other codecs. This can negatively impact the adoption rate of this codec as no one wants a slow video codec, whether you are the customer or the provider. But on the positive side, since H.266 was made with the future video content in mind, it supports current and up and coming video trends. So think of things like 8K video quality, 4K HDR content, as well as even high resolution 360 videos. H.266 has dedicated support for all of these kinds of videos. Previous codecs didn't have that dedicated support for alternative video content like this. And now with the rise of things like AR and VR content, a video codec with native support for such video content is going to be very useful. So now let's dive in a little bit deeper into the advantages of H.266. As mentioned before, according to Tess, H.266 offers 50% better compression as compared to H.265. That means that if you have a 90 minute 4K video that was encoded in H.265 that would take 10 gigabytes of space, that same video would only take five gigabytes of space when encoded with H.266. This means that it's far easier to stream higher quality video content for the same data cost 
or less strain on your home internet when streaming multiple 4K videos, for example. This is also useful for content creators and video hosting services, as the data demands to store these videos will be less. And also, if you are someone who uploads a video online all the time, you only need to upload half the amount of data without compromising on quality, meaning less downtime. The direct competitor to H.266 is the AV1 codec by AO Media. Testing shows that AV1 offers about 30% better compression as compared to H.265, which is a worse compression performance as compared to H.266. But compression isn't everything when it comes to video codecs. AV1 is significantly faster than H.266 to encode and decode, so it's ideal for users that don't want to deal with longer video encoding and decoding times. Because of this, we are seeing companies like Intel and Nvidia include special chips that are specifically designed to handle just AV1 tasks to further improve the performance of AV1 encoding and decoding. To put it into perspective, H.266 takes about 6.5 times longer to encode and about 1.5 times longer to decode as compared to H.265. AV1 on the other hand takes about 4 times longer to encode as compared to H.265. So while H.266 offers better compression, it also takes more time as compared to other codec solutions available, both new and old. Just like how compression performance isn't the only factor to a video codec, the same goes for encoding and decoding. There is another very important factor that may affect its adoption by small and large streaming companies. One of the main issues it currently faces in terms of market adoption is the fact that H.266 requires licensing to use. Its predecessor, H.265, faced the same issue as well. However, the competition wasn't nearly as there for H.265 as it is for H.266, so we started to see video camera companies and services start to adopt H.265 to further push the limits of being able to capture high bit rate, high bit depth video in the same data allowance. The issue with H.265 at the time and even today is that it has some of the most complex licensing procedures that not only was expensive to implement, but also a lengthy procedure involving multiple parties. H.266 or VCC will follow the same royalty-based licensing scheme and this is why H.266 has been a little bit slow to penetrate into the market despite it being available for a number of years. Even though the creator of the VCC standard has stated that they plan to implement a transparent and reasonable licensing policy, nothing beats royalty-free and this is where the AV1 codec offers. AV1 is a fully open source and royalty free codec, meaning it's easier and cheaper to implement than H.266. The cost saving and ease of use that AV1 provides will eventually lead to AV1 being more widely used as compared to H.266 and maybe even H.265. Huge platforms like YouTube and Netflix are already using AV1 due to the number of advantages it offers over H.266. There is still hope for H.266 to be adopted by manufacturers as it is being licensed by MCIF, a group of 30 companies. Some of these members include Sony, Qualcomm and Adobe. So all is not lost for H.266, but it definitely has a tough hill to climb if it wants to compete against AV1. Let me know what you think of H.266 and whether you think it has a chance against AV1. I'd love to hear your opinions in the comment section below. But that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, then make sure to smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with more videos like this. Anyway, look after yourselves and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.